Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhase Today we are going to learn about Namo tasse let me put up the, the screen for you. So what does Namo Tassa mean? Namo Tassa is a Namo Tassa is a uh, an abbreviation for Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Uh, in short we say Namo Tassa. Sometimes we say Namo Tassa to the lay people and immediately they will repeat this this verse namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa so let's um, let's go to the slides again today we are going to have a short teaching on namo tassa mostly just the grammar what it means word by word the basic meaning the word by word meaning and the basic grammar because it is important for you to know the meaning of each word and the grammar of each word. In Pali, we have the grammar built into the word. They're, they're concatenated together. And so when you have the words and you know what they mean while you're saying them, then it's, it's obviously much more powerful than a general, a general meaning. The general meaning is very simple. It just means reverence to the Buddha, or I give reverence to the Buddha. It actually doesn't specifically say, I give my reverence to the Buddha, but we'll understand that in a, in a few minutes. So we have Namo Tassa. Uh, I think you can see that on the board. And Namo means reverence. It means giving respect. You might have heard of the word namaste before, or namasakara, namasaka, or namaskara, and uh, obviously they're, they're related words. And it, it means to bow down, it means to bend, bend towards, uh, basically in English it means reverence. It's very simple. And we have tassa. So tassa is a, is a pronoun, it means him, and when we add uh, SSA to it, then it becomes to him. It becomes a complete word and it's added to the base or the stem and it means to him. It's the dative case. And so, Namo Tassa means reverence to him or I give my reverence to him. It's uh, implied that it's, that it's you, it's your reverence. Then we have the word uh, Bhagavato, Namo Tassa Bhagavato, Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa. Here we're not just saying reverence to him, we're saying reverence to the Bhagavat, the Bhagavant. This is translated as the Blessed One. And again, we have an ending, so the, the, the base word is Bhagavant and the dative case of that is bhagavato so it's namo tassa is reverence to him and reverence to the bhagavant so that's what the the next word means and now we're going to go to the next word is arhant namo tassa bhagavato arhato Samma Sambuddhasa. I'm repeating a lot because I want you to be able to memorize this and I want you to learn this one simple phrase by learning it over and over and over again. So that's why I'm repeating myself. A arhant is one who, who has greed, hatred, and delusion which are permanently cut off they cannot arise again. And that's what is very special of an arahant. An 
on the slide I don't have it translated because if you're if you're interested in Buddhism you know that the arhant is the, is the goal of Buddhism people regular people can become arhants they can with practice with uh, insight and vipassana meditation they can uh, permanently eradicate the greed hatred and delusion and once those are gone and completely eradicated they cannot come back and this is what causes the arhant to to achieve parinibbana after the death and that means that he's not born anywhere he doesn't go anywhere there's just no more arising of the five khandas so when when we have that state we can also call him the worthy one the arhant can be called the worthy one but uh, it's better we if we know this word as arhant what it means it means the greed hatred and delusion are completely gone the buddha is also an arhant so a buddha is very special the the buddha is very special and he's also an arhant and so you should you should know that the the blessed one and the arhant are other names for the buddha and also tassa to him is also referring to the buddha so let's go to the the next slide and we have samma sambuddhassa this is the last part of the phrase again tassa you might have you might remember ssa is the dative case added to the base or the stem word samma sambuddho we use that also in tassa ta plus ssa is tassa and so this is another case where it's the dative case they're all dative case actually but uh, this is uh, the same uh, the same word that that um, it's a similar uh, a similar way to to build the words it depends they have many different uh, types of words and they have many different endings uh, just for the dative case the samma sambuddho means the one who is perfectly enlightened now the buddha the buddha the samma sambuddho is a perfectly enlightened buddha and it takes four asankhya and 100,000 eons in order to uh, become a samma sambuddho and it's, it's it's very rare it's a very rare occurrence in the world and sometimes some other traditions say that you can become Buddha uh, if you investigate they're not really talking about uh, this Samma Sambuddha they're talking about something else uh, sometimes I don't even know what they're talking about but the Samma Sambuddha this is uh, the Buddha that you see the Buddha statues this is the Samma Sambuddha this is the one who brought us the teachings who discovered the teachings uh, a Buddha normally means one who discovers the teachings when the teachings are uh, not being taught or not alive we also have a pacheka buddha we have a samma sambuddha uh, these are the the two types of buddhas that we have and we are giving our respect to the buddha it's very rare to arise in the world and this is uh, very important to understand the difference between uh, just a, an arhant and uh, which which you can attain in this life and a difference between uh, a Buddha you cannot attain the Buddha you you sometimes Buddha means uh, arhant as well but normally when we say Buddha it means a Samma Sambuddha like like the like the great teacher uh, the Buddhist statues that we have uh, this represents a, a real person who existed uh, a uh, long time ago and so this is what it means so we have namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa so let's uh, let's finish so my respect to him 
my respect to the Blessed One, my respect to the Arhant, my respect to the Buddha, the perfectly self-enlightened one. So we say Namo to him, Namo to the Blessed One, Namo to the Arhant, and Namo to the Buddha, the perfectly self-enlightened one. So if we go to the next screen, we can build on that and uh, we can say Namo Tassa, that means Namo to him. Namo Bhagavato, that means Namo to the Bhagava. Namo Arhato, that means Namo to the Arhant. And Namo Sambuddhasa, that means Namo to the fully enlightened Buddha, Namo to the Samma Sambuddhasa. So again, so again we will uh, go through that one more time. In full we have Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhasa So in conclusion we have the we have learned the basic meaning we have learned the word by word meaning and we also have the basic grammar so i hope that you can know what you're saying while you're saying the namo tassa and you can respectfully uh, listen to the dhamma talks and you can uh, give proper reverence uh, as a preliminary to the dhamma talks and knowing what you're saying, you're really giving the reverence to the Buddha. It's very important. And then by doing that preliminary, then you'll be in the proper state so that you can fully take in what the Dhamma discourses are being said to you and you can use this for your development and for your samadhi and for your vipassana insight and so that you can attain Nibbana, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.